This is Integral's diesel electric hybrid solution. They call it the E Drive. And when you install it in a balanced catamaran, we call it the Versa Drive. In this video, we will display the Versa Drive performance results from an early sea trial aboard Balance 4A2 Breakaway. Hey, Phil, can you hear that? What? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so quiet, it's, it's unbelievable. We're proud to say that at the time of publishing this video, Breakaway is in Grenada, having successfully crossed the Atlantic. And there are four Versa Drive systems already out at sea, with many more to come. If you are looking for the detailed onboard computer data captured by Integral's team during the commissioning of these first systems, including model comparisons and real-world applications, then find links to the various resources in the description below. But if you want to stay for a user-captured first view in real time, then buckle up and enjoy the ride. We will be conducting 10 experiments throughout this video. They are Experiment A Pure electric, both e-motors propelling. Pure electric, single e-motor propelling. Single diesel, in gear, with e-drive charging. Single diesel in gear without charging. Twin diesels in gear without charging. Twin diesels in gear with charging. Hybrid propulsion. One diesel and one electric. That is to say one charging and one draining, but both propelling. And lastly, at anchor, charging only. Once with single engine and once with both. Let's begin by noting the environmental conditions for these experiments. It's a relatively flat sea state with a true wind of approximately 14 knots on the beam. And we ran it with the, on the beam so that we weren't being influenced either positively or negatively very much by the movement of the boat. Experiment A, pure electric, both e-motors propelling. We're running the electrics at um, 400 RPM and we're doing 1.2 knots of speed. And we are discharging about 0.4 yeah. discharge. Okay, now let's go to the next one. We're currently at 1,000 RPMs on the electrics at 2.7 knots of speed with an apparent wind on the beam of 14, point, 14 knots, give or take. We are discharging 3.3 kW at the present time. This is a good moment to point out two things. First, when we started our experiments, we didn't appropriately wait to let the new settings settle in. The intervals between RPM jumps needs roughly 30 to 40 seconds. We will indicate the average here, which may differ from Phil's number callouts. Second, the charge counter at the top is the collective house charge. For example, any onboard equipment currently drawing or the solar adding is equated into this number. For the sake of the experiment, we kept these low and stable. But for the accurate charge readings, take note of the smaller numbers here. Let's continue. At 1500 RPM on the electrics, we're doing 4.7 knots of, of speed, give or take. Again, with the wind on the beam currently at, uh, true wind currently on the beam at 12 to 13 knots and we're discharging 8.4 to 8.6 kW. At 2200 RPMs on the electrics, we're doing 6.8 to 7 knots with a 12 to 13 knot cross breeze with little Cs. We're now discharging approximately 30 kW. At that speed, you basically could, couldn't use the electrics for more than an hour. So yeah. at one five, that seems to be for, the, at least for this model, yeah. the most efficient amount of speed versus battery drain. Yeah. And it's approximately boats going around five knots yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in flat water. Pure electric, single e-motor propelling. 400 RPM on a single engine, a single electric motor. Again, a crosswind of 14 to 15 knots in relatively flat sea state, and our draw is minus 0.1 kW. So, at 2200 RPM on the electric motor, we're doing four to 4.7 knots in a 14 to 15 knot true wind cross breeze in relatively flat seas. 
and we're discharging at approximately 15 kW. 5.2, we're, we're racing now, okay? 5.6. Let's go to a single diesel under char charging, okay? Single diesel under charge. So we're under a single diesel engine at 1200 RPM, traveling about 2.9 to three knots with, a, uh, with an 11 to 12 knot crosswind, modest seas, and we are charging at 8.3 to 8.4 kilowatts. Now we're gonna go to 1600, puts us at approximately 3.5 knots of speed, 3.5 to 3.6 knots of speed, and we are charging at 10 kW. We're at 2100 RPM on a single diesel engine, traveling at 5.3 to 5.4 knots with a 13 knot or so crosswind, cross, true crosswind, and we're charging at 8.8 .8 kW. So now we're at 2600 RPMs under a single diesel at going 6.7 to 6.8 knots so you're now you're but we're only the... charging 3.6 yeah. kW. Yeah in the trial that we did yesterday yeah. we saw that at a certain point as you push that RPM up the charge drops off. Yeah. Why is that? So when we think of our e-power system that we've been shipping with balance boats for a long time that system worked very similarly to, or to the way that the e-drive system works. So um, E-Drive is obviously a much more efficient system, so it will generate more energy for the, the load that we're taking. But essentially the way that both of these systems work is we're uh, monitoring for available power. So mm -hmm. uh, low RPM, your engine without integral or any form, um, your prop isn't really maximizing the available power of the engine. So it's not running at its optimal efficiency. So by increasing the load, with, a, with another load, so we're generating electricity, uh, we're pushing that load closer to its optimal efficiency. So that's kind of the principle of the, the way that it works. But as we get to a higher RPM, we start to close that gap where we're trying to maximize efficiencies. When we get to sort of above 2000 RPM, that gap gets smaller. So there's not as much available power for us to take. And as soon as you get to sort of 3000 RPM, the prop needs all of that load that the Thank engine is, is pushing out. So um, we'll see that obviously the way that it kind of runs, it starts to back off power and that's because it's trying to make sure that the prop's got all that available energy um, that it needs. Single diesel in gear without charging. Be because we're only working with a diesel engine, we're showing a negative drain just from the electronics that we're using on the boat, yeah. right? Yeah. So now really, all we're really looking at is the speed, right? So go ahead and bring it up to 1600. So at 1600 RPMs under a single diesel engine, we're doing between 3.8 and 4 knots, again in a 12 knot crosswind um, and modest sea state. At 2600 RPM under a single diesel, we're doing 6.1 to 6.5 knots of speed. Twin diesels in gear without charging. So at 1200 RPMs with both diesel engines running and no charge going on to the integrals, we're doing 3.8 to 3.6 to 3.8 knots. At 1600 RPMs with both diesel engines running and no integral charging, we are doing 4.7 to 4.8 knots with a 12 to 13, uh, uh, 11 to 12 not cross breeze at 2100 rpm with both diesel engines running without integral charging we are doing approximately 6.3 to 6.5 at 2600 rpms with both diesel engines running and no integral charging we're doing about 7.7 .7 to 7.9 even up to eight knots. Twin diesels in gear with charging. At 
1200 RPMs with the diesels running and the integrals charging. We're doing between 3.7 and 3.9 knots of boat speed and we're charging at 17.3 kW. At 1600 RPMs with both diesels running and the integrals charging, we are doing 4.8 to 5 knots of boat speed with a 13 knot crosswind on the beam and modest seas. And we are charging at approximately 18.8 to 18.9 kW. At 2100 RPMs, we're doing 6.2 to 6.5 knots with a 13 knot cross breeze, and we're charging at 18 to 18.3 kW. Depending on how many batteries you get, um, that can li limit the charge rate. So for this system, um, we've got a maximum of 19 kilowatts. So that's spread between three uh, battery banks. Um, and we've got 36 kilowatt hour. Um, if you went for two more batteries, then that would increase. So at the moment, the only limitation when we're at sort of 2000 RPM isn't the engine. The available power is there, um, it's the batteries. And also for the batteries, it's much healthier to, to do that. You know, you don't want to constantly be charging at a really high rate into the batteries. At 2600, we're doing approximately 7.4 to 7.7 .7 knots right now in an 11 knot cross breeze and modest seas, but we're charging at 8.6. It, it looks like the around six knots is like kind of the, a sweet spot under the diesels where you're getting yeah. a lot of charge, yeah. getting maximum charge at six knots. While we have this chart, I also want to point out that both experiments E and F are loaded here, meaning twin diesels in gear are shown with charge and without charge, and the line representing their speed is near identical. This is proof that whether you are charging or not charging, the E drive is not taking anything away from the diesel's power. At a thousand RPM on the diesel engine, and the electric, one diesel engine running and one electric at 1,000 RPMs. We're traveling at 3.3 to 3.5 knots with about an 11 knot cross wind. And we're charging at a rate of 5.3 kW. At 1,600 RPM under both a single diesel engine and the single electric motor, we're doing approximately 5 to 5.1 knots and we're charging at 6.5 kW. So now we're going to go to 2000 at 2000 RPMs with one diesel engine and 2000 RPMs with one electric motor. We're doing 6.2 to 6.4 knots of speed with a 13 knot crosswind and modest seas. And we're charging at between 2 and 2.3 kilowatts. In other words, we're, we're, we're motoring now at a positive rate of charge. Think? I think it's fascinating. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting how at around six knots of speed with yeah. 1800 RPM on the diesel and 2000 on the electric running both, we're still having a positive charge. Right? We're almost we're almost at the equilibrium at yeah. this point. Yeah. And this would be the most fuel efficient. Yeah. So you could go across the doldrums at six knots on this dual engine format. Of course, you could also, as I, you know, you could also run with one or two diesel engines until your batteries are fully topped yeah. off and then go to pure electrics exactly. for yeah. Yeah. an hour or two, yeah. depending upon the speed. So you have so many different yeah. ways in which you can operate the boat. I mean, this, is, this way here is the perfect way where you're going to be in, increasing your range if you want. So you're going to increase your range by, let's say, 30, 40 percent. Yeah. This makes a lot of difference. Yeah. It's just working out those kind of like those right. sweet spots. And then, Learning yeah. what the sweet spot yeah. is, yeah. So we're doing the on-anchor charging test on the Balance 482 in Cape Town. And the engine at idle is at 800 RPM. That's the lowest RPM it can it can be at and yeah idling and that's giving us 1.4 kW now we're gonna go to 1200 rpm at 1200 rpm we're getting 8.6 kW look at that integral sizzle it'll do that forever as well <laughs> okay now 
at 2,000 RPM, the single engine is charging at 14.5 to 14.6 kW. That's not just sizzling, that's sizzling fajitas. That's sizzling fajitas. Okay, all right. At 2,500 RPM, under a single diesel engine at anchor, we're generating 13.9 kW. All right, so you're sitting at anchor and you just have your engines in neutral at 800 RPM and you're generating with both engines 3.6 to 3.7 kW. Both engines operating at 1200 RPMs, diesel engines operating at 1200 RPMs, sitting at anchor, we're gonna generate approximately 18 kW of power. So it's maxed out at 1800 RPMs. We're getting 20 kW. Okay. There's probably some fuels. 19 to 20 kW. Some of the balance customers, they say what they do is they turn the integrals on and they run their water maker um, and some other high load stuff and then they turn them up. So that gives you a bit more capacity. So because you're taking power out as well as putting in, you could probably get to 1,800 and generate more because you're not only charging the batteries but also running some of those other loads. So you would get a little bit more in that scenario. Okay. So if you wanted to do some high sort of draw things like cooking or boiling the kettle or running so the So what you're saying is if you're at anchor mm. and you're running your water maker and you're doing other high draw yeah. things, then yeah. you can go above 1,200 yeah. because you're charging. There's more capacity, you basically. You have more yeah. capacity yeah. because your batteries are coming off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you would reach, so let's say, your 19 kilowatts of your batteries, but then it needs another three to run this kettle and another one to run all the air conditioning. So the total, obviously, is a lot higher. So okay. you, that's where you would probably use that. But if you're just sort of sitting at anchor and you just, there's not many loads, yeah, of course, 1,200 okay. is that kind of perfect Great. sweet spot. To see all the data captured in these experiments neatly consolidated into one page, visit balancecatamarans.com forward slash eDrive. There is also a link in the description. There you will find further information, data interpretation, and more links to understanding the benefits of a hybrid system like the eDrive. But to wrap up this video, here are a few early key takeaways. When running on pure electric, using only one motor provides a decent amount of boat speed compared to two engines, with around half the discharge. Where this really becomes exciting is during silent motor sailing. Maximize your speed and range significantly, especially in light winds, without using a drop of diesel. While charging with diesel engines running, it does not put excess load on your engine or cause any downside to boat speed. At higher RPMs, the charge will drop off rather than hinder the power to the props. On the Balance 4A2, the best speed to charge ratio is twin diesel charging at roughly 2,400 RPMs, traveling at seven knots. Hybrid propulsion is an incredible way to maximize your range per liter of fuel. Dialed in just right, you can motor above six knots and remain at a positive rate of charge. It's been calculated to give you a 35 to 40% better fuel efficiency rate. And that's pretty revolutionary. Lastly, and truthfully the leading reason why Balance was interested in adopting this technology in the first place, is charging at 20 plus kilowatts while at anchor. This not only saves fuel usage through less engine hours, but dramatically increases your quality of life in making your catamaran a home at sea. All in all, we are thrilled with these early results. It improves both the performance and the comfort of our boats. The VersaDrive has everything it should to be part of the Balance Catamaran's ethos. Engineered for performance, crafted for quality, designed for living. Stay tuned for more updates as this tech advances. So until next time, stay in balance.